Hello and welcome to Rotter Reviews, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the 2013 movie, Where? This was a request that was put in by patron Tuan Strong, and the reason that he picked this movie in particular is because I thought it was an interesting addition to the found footage genre. It has a very nice atmosphere and setting. Written and directed by William Brent Bell, who you might recognize as the creator of Stay Alive and The Boy, as well as written by Matthew Peterson. This movie opens by having a family taking a nice little picnic out in the French countryside where they are viciously attacked by something in the bushes. With the mother being the lone survivor, she gives her eyewitness testimony to the police wherein she indicates that it is something very large, very hairy, and uses the term man, not thing or animal or beast. It was somebody that did this. So the police investigation goes from an accident, possible an animal attack, into a murder investigation, and that's where they pick up Talon Gwinnick. Big old tower of a man that's also quite hirsute. Very hairy arms, beard, the whole schmeal. Very, yeah, very hairy fellow. And therein, we find the film's actual protagonist that we're following along in his defense counsel. As they're going along with this investigation of the police, they're also trying to absolve their client of any wrongdoing, prove that it was indeed an animal attack, and essentially try to win Talon's freedom. I don't think this was entirely 100% found footage. It's honestly a little difficult to tell because this pulls from a whole lot of sources. This is completely free about cutting over to CCTV archive footage, to news camera footage, all sorts of different sources. And when we we are getting a disembodied narrative. It is more shaky than the traditional uh, viewpoint of a non-found footage film. So as the tall, hairy man and the whole beast animal attack thing and honestly the name of the movie might imply we are dealing with a fairly traditional monster trope but it's tackling it in a really interesting way that's quite unique in my opinion i kind of like it when we have situations where we have something that is in our modern lexicon of ghosts and ghouls and goblins and monsters and it kind of gets pulled back and says well what if it was something simpler than that what if it was something a little bit more scientifically explainable than that and just is kind of blown out of proportion through tales told over generations. I dig that aspect. I love it when a movie kind of pulls back from that and offers some plausible explanations that are a little bit more grounded in reality than simply a werewolf. I also loved that this movie did take the perspective that it did. Uh, it's not uncommon for a film to follow a, an attack or a murder investigation or something along those lines by following in the police's footsteps. But I do think it was actually kind of a unique way to mirror the police investigation by actually having the defense counsel follow instead. We have a situation where the same level of investigation is happening, but it's happening behind characters with a different goal set. They inherently believe their client, or at the very least, they have to give their clients words and story and so forth some credence. It's nothing that they can really dismiss out of hand. They want to find the truth just as much as anybody else but they want to find it to exonerate somebody. I just think that that's an interesting twist on the whole thing. It makes it so that we have our investigation, but we have it from a different lens, and it makes it kind of uh, an interesting watch that's something that I don't really see put to screen that often. But I'm not going to say that this was the perfect movie. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I do recommend this one. This was a solid entry, and I love its take on monster movies, but this did have some flaws. First of all, it did deal with a narrative that I honestly kind of find to be a bit exhausting. Exhausting. I'm not really marking this movie down, certainly not in the score for this, just kind of my own personal notes. One of the reasons that I'm exhausted and tired of zombie movies is because of the trope that constantly, 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 constantly gets hit on is the silent infected. The person that gets bit or scratched and is perfectly fine, nothing to worry about, let me just roll down my sleeves, everything's okay, don't look over here and jeopardizes the entire crew. I love movies and TV shows and so forth that deal with that intelligently and pragmatically when you have somebody that's selfless and recognizes that they are jeopardizing the group and say, got bit, kill me. That's <laughs> remarkable. And that's honestly the fresh take on the tire trope. But this movie doesn't really do that. It just kind of leans into the tire trope. Again, I'm not marking that down on points. That's not a negative against the story. It's just my personal proclivities and what I'm honestly sick of seeing on screen. But the one aspect of this film that I am going to be marking it down on points with, and I do need to point out, is this is a movie that did exceptionally well in practical effects. It does some good uh, prosthetics. It does some good body horror stuff going on there. Um, if anybody is really 
really that interested in you know major transformation scenes that a lot of werewolf movies are kind of renowned for and eh, aren't quite so much here a little bit but victimization the victims on the morgue slabs and so forth and the uh, attacks and the gruesome elements and the practical effects were rock solid and awesome very good very visceral up close doesn't really blink about it but this movie relies so heavily on digital effects and those were abysmal to its credit it doesn't really rely on it in a huge fashion it's not like we have you know 50 foot monsters you know tearing through the city you know in all cg but this does rely on it for pretty much all the little ancillary things all the gunshot wounds as they're happening and you know uh muzzle flashes and so on it's just the little stuff the digital blood splatter but all of it looks terrible and i hate that i think it's totally unnecessary i miss the days in which actors would actually wear squib vests and actually you know have a you know pyrotechnician with blood packs on site those were awesome and if you're going to have digital effects at the very least actually make them worthwhile shell out some money you know sacrificing on set practical effects for the sake of uh, a penny saved which is what i'm guessing happened here it's only doing your movie a disservice. You're only trading one sin for another. But beyond all that, again, I thought this was a very serviceable story. It was a unique take, a unique perspective on a unique take, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. The acting was very decent. I don't have a whole lot of complaints for it. There's not a lot of range happening here, so there's not a lot to laud over, but everybody felt very believable. Brian Scott O'Connor playing Talon was an absolute force to be reckoned with. And it's not even necessarily the performance he brought to the table as much as it is really excellent casting and makeup choices. The idea that this could be potentially the more grounded, realistic, scientific basis for werewolf stories, I bought it. So I'm not going to try and make the claim that this is my favorite werewolf movie. I have some solid entries that would be ahead of it in line, but this was a very enjoyable watch and a solid entry into a decent monster myth, and I'm very glad that I watched it. So not my highest recommendation, but an unflinching, full, across-the-board recommendation nonetheless. Thank you, Tuan, for bringing this one to my attention. I'm really glad that you did. I'm glad that I got the opportunity to watch Where. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this, please click like and subscribe. And be sure to check out my companion channel, Rotted Entertainment. I'm going to include the link below. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.